The red peppers grow on the banks of the brook, and the Mexicans use them in all that they cook. Just dine with a vaquero, and then you will shout. I got hell on the inside as well as the out. Since I'm American and a bachelor, I'm going to eat it right out of the pan. None of this slowing down by putting it on a plate crap. Here's part two of the video on the HOH so-called water car scam. And I apologize for the fan noise. Coming from my laptop, I just can't get rid of the bloody thing. Uh, wrap the laptop up in bath towels and it still hums, so... There's still a couple people out there busting my chops claiming that the HOH water uh, fuel scam is valid. Of course, the physics um, says otherwise, and I will show you some numbers, which I promised in the part one of this video. One can calculate how many watts, that is joules per second, that a vehicle consumes going on a level surface by a simple calculation. I am taking 1992 Toyota pickup as a example since I own one. The curb weight is 1,569.43 kilograms. That is a vehicle, my vehicle, filled with gasoline and oil, but no other cargo and no passengers. Since I weigh about 81.6466 kilograms, that is one passenger, and I'm going to plug that into the formula. I am also going to say that the vehicle will be traveling at an average of 55 miles per hour, which is 24.587 meters per second. Since my vehicle is old and worn out, even though I grease the axles uh, very frequently, once a year, I am going to do a conservative estimate of friction and drag and all that to 4.47 meters per second over a 10 second time period. That is, when I let the accelerator off on my vehicle, it slows down at a rate of 4.47 meters per second over a 10 second period. So I take these figures and I plug it into the formula above and I get joules per second, which is watts. Therefore, to maintain my pickup at 55 miles per hour, I must expend a horsepower of 24.35, that is, in watts, 18,146.16 watts. Depending on the scam involved, there are claims of anywhere from 33% to 50% fuel efficiency for converting water into hydrogen and oxygen. I'm going to use a conservative 33%. That means for a device to power my vehicle at 55 miles per hour at a 33% efficiency added to that, the device must produce 5,988.2328 watts. That is joules per second. If you use electricity to convert water into hydrogen and oxygen, you will always, without exception, get less energy from the hydrogen, combusting the hydrogen, than the electricity that you use. If you use 6,000 6, watts of electricity to convert water into hydrogen and oxygen, and then burn that hydrogen and oxygen, you will get far, far less than 6,000 watts or 6,000 joules per second out of that process. Uh, a great deal less because the conversion is certainly not 100%. So for those devices out there to provide that additional 6,000 watts to improve my vehicle's um, efficiency by 33%, those devices must produce 20,000, 30,000 kilo or watts per second just to improve my vehicle's efficiency by 33%. And not a goddamn one of those 
uh, will do it, nor can they. And even if they could, they still have to burn fuel to do that. There is no getting away from the mathematics. There is no getting away from the second law of thermodynamics. There is no way that they can, quote, burn water, unquote, at an efficiency that even meets the amount of electricity required, let alone exceeds it. It is impossible. So I also point out that the United States Environmental Protection Agency tested many of these devices and they found them absolutely worthless. And of course, any and every physicist on the entire planet could have told them that without even needing to test them. I should also point out, you know, the United States government, uh, fairly or unfairly, mandates that automobile manufacturers in the United States currently and in the future must improve their vehicle's uh, fuel efficiency by a certain percentage over a certain time frame. Um, a lot of that is not fair to the manufacturers because, of course, there's just so much you can do to improve efficiency and then you've done what your engineers are capable of and then what? If these devices actually improved vehicle efficiency, by even a fraction of what the crooks are selling uh, these devices claim, you know, not even 33%, or if it improved it 8%, these vehicles would be in every new vehicle produced in the United States and Japan and Germany ever, and they would meet the United States uh, legal requirements for fuel efficiency improvement. Bottom line, these devices do not work because they cannot work because the very laws that govern the universe say they cannot. Of course, they are also proven not effective by the EPA in real life testing. So, I should also note there's a million dollar reward for anyone who can produce these devices and show a 25% fuel efficiency over a span of six months. So I'll put the URL up there.